Hey, how's it going guys, Sizzle here. So in today's video, I'll show you how to make a simple logo in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. So as you might see already, this is Photoshop, but it looks pretty similar and it is pretty similar. So, so first of all, make yourself a canvas. So you would want to go on file, new, and then you can select from the presets or just make your one on the right. I'll just go with the 1920 by 1080, doesn't really matter. I just want to have a nice big canvas, but you can choose what you want to work with. So once you have that done, uh, you want to make a new layer. Then you want to go onto a site called thefont.com. If you already use Photoshop or whatever, then you might already know this site. It's a site with uh, free fonts, with a lot of them actually. And we will be using this site to get like the main frame of the logo down. So depends what you are uh, going for. There's a lot of different uh, themes here. I'm just going to go for like a basic font. So let's see what looks nice. So I'll be going with the Retroika font. So what you want to do is just click on it and then click download. I already have the font, but I'll just demonstrate it anyway. Then you will get this folder. You just want to double click on the TTA file, click install. And as you can see, it's already installed for me, so I won't do it, but just click yes. And then it will install the font for you. I will also be using a font called American Kestrel. As you can see, it has like the wings on capital letters uh, and you will see why in a second. So once you got your fonts of choice, you will go back to your program, so Affinity or Photoshop. You will go into the layer you made and just um, simply type in the letter you want the, your logo to be. Obviously make uh, the size a bit bigger. So you can just go with like a P for example. So select the letter P and then go to the font you want to use. So for me it's our Troika. Maybe scale it up to like... Uh, Let's say like 500, that should work. Now you can decide what you want to do. So I will be selecting it. Then you want to go on the character styles, which is located right here. I'm gonna give it like a italic kind of look. So I'll just slant it down a little bit, like 15 degrees. So it looks like this. Now once you have this done, I'll just duplicate the layer, but you can just make a new text layer. And then change the font of the duplicated layer to well, just show, uh, to the other font I showed you earlier, the American Kestrel one. And you will see why in just a second. You want to rasterize it, so right click on the layer and rasterize. Then I'll just get out my pen tool. And I'll just uh, cut off basically the whole letter, except for the wings. This area should be fine. I'll just, just cut around it. Doesn't really matter. And just delete it. Now you're left with these wings, which you can use to add onto your logo. So I'll just take the wings and place it like onto the logo. Just play around with it until it looks nice. So this looks about right. Then we just uh, get a selection tool again and delete this X uh, part sticking out. You can also delete this actually. And there we go, you have like a, you have the letter P with like a wing, looks pretty nice. Or else you could just use the standard letter P, like from the font without like cutting it off or anything. But it would look like that and I don't really like the look of it. And I think the wing goes out a bit too far. So yeah. Then another thing you can add is like a little, a little edge sticking out from the bottom. So you want to get your pen tool again, go to the bottom of your text, hold shift so it goes in a straight line. Just make it go as far as you want. So I'll just make it like here, hold shift again, and just uh, connect the pen tool. Make a selection and get your brush. Make sure it's black. Just fill it in. And there we go. You have like this nice protruding corner. You can obviously move a bit more inside or outside, depending on how far you want it to stick out. I'll just probably move a little bit in towards the inside. And there we go. That's basically the basic logo done here. I think it looks pretty clean and uh, you don't really need anything else to add on to this but I will show you one more thing so first of all once you've done that you want to select all these layers and then press ctrl j to copy and ctrl g to, uh, to group them move the group up then uh, group the other ones as well you can name this copy just so you don't lose it and hide it now you can right click on the p and then well, I mean now you can right click on the group and then rasterize it so it's one layer. Then you can go to this Eclipse tool right here, make a new layer and a hold shift while you're making a circle. I just make it around this big. So like almost covers the whole logo, but not really. Make sure the fill is off or transparent or whatever. And the stroke is on black and you select the width. So I'll probably go with something like around 30, that's fine. 
and there we go. Now you want to go into the layer and center it with these like little, whatever you want to call them. I don't really know what they're called. Also align your logo. So this is what it looks like. I'll probably make the eclipse a bit smaller like this actually. Yeah, this looks pretty fine. Make sure to center it again. Now it looks like this. Obviously it looks a bit weird now. And I'll show you what you can do to make it look a bit better. So first make a copy of the eclipse. Hide it and move it into the group that you made earlier. Now press Ctrl and click on the uh, small preview picture of your logo. Go to select, grow or sh uh, grow and shrink. Or on Photoshop it's probably expand. And you want to expand it by like around maybe 25 I'd say. Should be fine. Go back to the clips with your eraser tool. And just erase everything that's selected. Make sure to rasterize your circle first before you erase. And then you'll be left with something like this. And I think this looks pretty good. If you don't like the gap in between the letter and the circle, you can obviously make it smaller, but I'll just leave it how it is. Well, now, once you have your basic logo done, you want to go on File again, go on New, and just make yourself a box. So 800 by 800 should be fine. There we go. We have a nice box. So what we can do now is, is uh, group these two, then rasterize them. Press Ctrl C, go into your new layer or new file or whatever, and paste it in. Now you can select your layer and center it again. So it's right in the middle. But now this looks too plain, so we will want to add a background and maybe like a ring around. Obviously there's a lot of things you can do for the background. I'll just get a random picture of woods. So this looks pretty fine, you just want to right click copy image. Go back to your program and just paste it in. Now it looks, it still looks kind of weird, so what you want to do is go on filters, go on blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur it until you're happy with it. So I'd say like, like a lot, between 12 and 15 should be pretty fine. So now you can go into your woods layer, press Ctrl U and then turn the saturation down. Now go on to the adjustments uh, layer again, go on gradient map. And now this looks pretty weird, but we just have to delete these points and just select what colors you would like to work with. So I'd say like a nice purple should be fine. And then add like a darker color. So select your, your black on the left side and your color of choice on the right. Maybe I'll make it a bit darker actually just so it looks a bit nicer. It's something like this is pretty good. Now you want to select the two adjustment layers and uh, the background image. Go into group, right click and rasterize. Now you'll be left with something like this. It's still not done. You can barely tell where the logo is. So you go to the logo. Now what I like to do is just pen tool the outer circle. So once you have one box down just make a selection. Press Ctrl J. Now go back to your logo and press Ctrl X to cut the old one out. Now you want to repeat the, uh, the process with the remaining outer circles. Now you can select these three parts of the circle and group them and rasterize them straight away. Now you can just move this freely as well as the letter. So now what you can do is click on the outer circle, press FX to open the effects tab. Now you can go into color overlay and choose the color of your choice. So I'll probably go like a purple or pinkish color. Something like this looks pretty good. Press close and I'll go to your letter and I'll make the letter white in this case. Obviously if you're working with a bright background then you might want to use a, a dark color of the letter but now we're working with a dark background so we're going to use the bright one. And now as you can see it pops out way more and looks way nicer in general. So now one more thing you can do is make a new layer, get your Eclipse tool again, or Ellipse, I'm not sure, and make another circle while holding Shift. Make sure to hold Shift so it's even. So make it about this size, make sure the fill is off or transparent, and the stroke is whatever color you want uh, the outer circle to be. So I'll, I'll just use white for this case, make the stroke a bit thicker. Something like this. Make sure to center it, and there we go. That's pretty much it, but you can add some small little touches if you want. So go on to the background layer, make a new layer, open your brush, make sure the hardness is down and your brush is pretty big. So add around like 2.5K, something like that. And you can just make a nice underglow. You can maybe add your, your purple color at the top as well, like this. If you're wondering why I did this outer circle as well, it's just because this is what it looked like on your socials. So this is what, what it will look like on your Twitter profile, for example. You see it has this nice little circle around it because the, 
Twitter profile picture is not a square, it's a circle. But obviously if you're not only, uh, if you're not going to use your logo on Twitter or whatever, then you can just leave the circle out. Now we are pretty much done, so you can go into File, Save As, and then you can just save it wherever, so you can always edit the logo. And then once you did that, you can export it as PNG. Click Export, I'm just going to name it Tutorial Logo. There we have it. Now I'm just going to go to my Twitter real quick and I'm going to use the logo just to show you how it looks like on the Twitter profile. So I'm going to select it here, click apply. And this is what it looks like on your Twitter. It looks very nice in my opinion. And this outer circle just makes it look even nicer. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, I will leave you the PSD files in the description as well as the PNG version of this logo. If you want to use it, uh, yeah, if your username starts with a P then... I guess you're lucky you can just use this without having to make one but if not then just follow the steps and just do it for the letter of your choice so anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial if you want more tutorials then make sure to comment down below and say what you would like to see from me next and yeah thank you for watching guys make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really helps me out a lot i'm almost at 300 subs so that would be very nice if i could hit that and yeah i'll see you in the next one bye bye